for the leather journey on decks and today we're going to do a little bit more on floggers if you followed my impact series um, i sh basically teach four techniques with all classes of whips we'll go over those real quickly first is the bow and arrow you bring all the tails together and you throw it like you're shooting an arrow out of a bow uh, the next is what i call over the shoulder or off the shoulder and then I teach uh, a horizontal dynamic technique and what I call the forward figure eight, okay? But for those of you that um, have been in the lifestyle a while and have seen a lot of flogging or you've done a lot of flogging yourself, you're gonna go, well, there are other ways of throwing a flogger than what Dex is teaching. And that's what I'm gonna focus on today because there's different styles of flogger manufacture. This is a a traditional flogger that's been made with a handle but there's also a flogger called a finger flogger and I don't have a finger flogger but we're gonna hold this flogger finger flogger style a uh, finger flogger uh, two loops of leather would go over your fingers and the tails would come off of those and you would throw it thusly okay so holding it finger flogger style I can still do a bow and arrow I can still come off the shoulder, I can still do horizontal, and I can still do my forward figure eight. But what that does is it, it allows you a little bit different technique. You can do some Florentine work with finger floggers easier, and we can do, uh, we can throw it wrist style. So uh, traditional handhold style, the four techniques I teach I think are the most common. But you're also going to see people throw with just their wrist, just on the forehand, without using the backhand. But with this style, which is almost like a, a fan or a, a sideways helicopter, uh, I could turn that over and I could throw that on the backhand side too. So you see that style done a lot. Um, and ranging is real easy with that style, okay? Um, one of my concerns with that style only is I, I consider the heart and root chakra. And if you're only throwing on the forehand side, you're only putting energy on one side of the chakra unless you, you consciously balance that and shift to, um, you know, from one shoulder to the other shoulder. But you can certainly throw that style. Now, so someone out there is going to ask, well, Dex, why don't you teach that style? That's not a style I teach because my leather journey has migrated toward single tails. And um, when I pick up a single tail, I can throw it using all the four techniques that I showed that I teach. We can throw it horizontal. We could throw it forward figure eight. But if you get into whip construction, you'll know that a single tail has a belly and a spine and inside the whip, there are bolsters between the bellies. And I'm concerned if you, if you throw this fan style, every time the whip comes around, you're, you're twisting and putting forces on those internal bellies and on that bolster. So I am concerned that throwing this style with a single tail, over time, you're gonna damage the bolster inside. So I don't teach that. I have seen a lot of people throw that way. I'm not gonna say that's right or wrong. Sometimes that style is done overhand like this. It's also done horizontal or vertical like thusly. Now you could go and uh, if you're really committed to throwing that style, you could hold that loosely in the palm of your hand and throw it with the belly. And then as it comes around, loosely rotate it in your hand so that every time it comes around, I'm throwing it with the belly. If you're able to do that, then I would say there's no concern with damaging the bolster but if you're holding it firmly in your hand 
And every time you, you come around, you're putting a twist on that bolster, then I contend over time that's gonna damage the whip and cause it to prematurely break down because the bolster's gonna shift at some point. Uh, I had a three, three foot snake uh, early in my journey before I learned how to throw a single tail and, and I did damage the bolster and I had to send it back to a whip maker and have it rebuilt. So I know it can happen because it happened to one of my snakes. But at any rate, thanks for watching, as always, The Leather Journey.